What's going on everyone? It is Spencer. It has literally been way too long since I made a video. I I pulled out my camera the other day to film just some like random coffee b-roll. If you guys want to see that, let me know because I can definitely post that. But it's like I literally just made it just to make it. And I was like, you know what? I miss I miss making videos. So I'm gonna be getting back into videos and posting YouTube videos. So you know what? I don't even know if any of you guys are still out there from like way back when. But if you are, drop a comment down below, say hello. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna be making videos again. I'm gonna be doing um, more of like photography, design, and just kind of visuals, and also just like random life stuff. So if that interests you, be sure to subscribe, stay subscribed, and leave a like, and all that good stuff. But today I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to make um, map posters. Um, I saw some on Pinterest and throughout YouTube and whatever, and I was like, you know what? I want one of those, I'm not gonna buy one because I'm sure I can figure out how to make it. And I did, so I'm gonna be showing you guys how to do that yourself so that you can spruce up your walls if they're plain like mine or if you just want something to do during this corona craziness while we're all stuck inside and need to exercise our creative juices. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to mapbox.com. We're gonna be using their service to create our map style and also just get the map so we don't have to like make the map ourselves in Illustrator because that would take literally years. Um, but Mapbox is kind of used by social media companies and a couple other different services or whatever to use their map in their app so that they don't have to make their own map. So developers use this, but we're literally not going to be even scratching the surface of what Mapbox can do. We're literally just going to be using it to create a style and get the map. So what you're going to have to do is go to mapbox.com and go over um, click this start mapping for free just make yourself a little account a little, little account so once you've made yourself a mapbox account you can go ahead and click on your little profile picture over here I don't have one I have the default we're gonna go ahead and click on studio so we get into the mapbox studio I'm gonna let that load so if this is your first time on mapbox this page is gonna be completely blank but if you're like me and you've made one you might have one in there but we're gonna be starting from scratch so we're gonna go over here to clicking a new style and you can click one to kind of start the base. Now, since we're making this for like a poster, I want this to be kind of minimal. I don't want this to look like this, where it's all like beige and nasty. We're gonna go ahead and click monochrome and that is gonna make it a lot easier so we don't have to edit nearly as much stuff. And I also uh, wanna click on light, just cause for me personally, I'm gonna, I want the base of the map to be white instead of black. And then we're gonna hit customize monochrome. So now that we've loaded into the map, we're gonna go ahead and go over onto this left hand side. We can see uh, the colors and typography um, editing. And we're gonna go ahead and click on manage color palette. So what this menu is, is it's kind of all the colors that you want to edit and that you wanna have control over. So by default, the base is already put over here. You can see that the base is like editable already, but all these other ones, you have to click the plus if you wanna edit it. So I'm gonna scroll down to the very bottom where water is, because I definitely don't want my water to be this weird gray color. Um, and I'm gonna click add to color palette. And I'm gonna also click it again, and I'm gonna scroll down and find roads. And we're gonna start with those three. So the base is kind of like the land mass. So all over here, just whatever's land. Um, and right now it's kind of this gray color. And by default, it's kind of hard to see the difference between the water and the land. And I definitely don't want that to be the case in my final prints. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my base just pure white, um, which, you know, obviously now it's even harder to see against this water. So I'm for sure gonna go over here to water and change this to dark black. Now throughout this tutorial, I'm going for this like white and black minimalist look, but if you guys wanna change those colors, say you want your um, land to be uh, red and you want your roads to be white and the water to be white, you can definitely do that and you can customize this to whatever colors you want, whatever fits your aesthetic for when you print these out and to look great in your room and whatever color your room is. So now that we've changed the water and the land, I'm also gonna go in here and change the roads so that we can actually see them because they're, again, you know, totally lost. So I'm gonna go over here to roads and I'm gonna make them this deep black, 100% black so that we can really see the contrast as we zoom in and we can see all those tiny little roads against that um, base landmass color. So by now you're probably noticing the annoying little labels that are all over sprinkled across this map, um, which you know are normally useful for navigation and stuff for the developers that are using Mapbox to you know use this in an app or something. Um, but like 
if I'm making a poster for San Francisco, I don't really need this ugly default label um, to tell me that it's San Francisco. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the uh, where the label is, and that gives me control over the label. So if I did wanna leave it, I could actually click on um, like the major cities category and I can change the font, I can change the size, I'm gonna make it bigger here. Um, just kind of show you what that does. But for what we're gonna do, we're gonna add our own like big heading label at the end when we're done with Mapbox. So I'm gonna go ahead and just turn every single label off that I can find. So to turn these labels off, I'm, I can either click on them uh, one by one and kind of you know go over here to click on place labels and then it'll come up in this corner and you can also just like go through this sidebar and edit all the individual settings. So over here, I'm literally just gonna click on like countries, turn those off, states, turn those off, settlements, turn those off, um, settlement subdivisions, turn those off, and instantly we're starting to see a lot less things. A lot of these you'll notice are like airports and points of interest and uh, like parks and stuff. To disable these in the on the left hand menu, we can go to natural features. And unlike the place labels and point of interest, there's no like instant little um, switch to just turn off. So we actually have to go into more options and then view layers. And once you click this, you're gonna see this kind of confusing menu and that literally lists every single layer of the map. So don't get too overwhelmed. Just go over into the highlighted area where it says natural features, natural labels. And we're gonna go ahead and just click on all the ones that we wanna disable. So if I wanna edit the water point label, I just have to go down to opacity click on override so that we can like unlock the controls and then just literally change the text opacity to zero. And I'm gonna do these for every single one of these natural um, labels so that these don't show up on the map and we have a nice clean map with no labels. So that disabled some of the natural ones but there's also a point of interest so we have to go up to point of interest and click on opacity, override, and zero. So something to keep in mind as you're going through your editing process with your little cursor you can your little hand you can click on um, any location on the map and it'll show you um, the layers that are in that section where you just clicked so like for instance i literally just clicked in the middle of this water so i can click on water and like edit the color for water specifically um, so that comes in handy when you're editing things like airport so you don't have to scroll through the giant menu you can just kind of like click on the airport label click on the t airport label which is the text um, go over to opacity, override, and set to zero so that it disappears. So with the airports, you definitely don't want to forget about the little icon because those are really easy to forget and they're really small. So once you click on the icon um, and click on that airport label, we went over here and set the text opacity to zero, but you also have to go over to icon, which is right here, and then click on the same thing, opacity, override it, and then set it to zero. And also as I zoomed in, I noticed that I didn't actually disable all the roads. So I'm gonna go over here to road label, override it and hit it hit it to zero so that we don't have to look at those. So once you have finished styling your map and deleting all those labels, um, it's time to get the static image that you're gonna be using on your poster. So first of all, I'm gonna go over to the search bar and type in uh, San Antonio, Texas, which is the city I wanna do. Um, so now I have this view of San Antonio um, and I'm gonna zoom in to where I can see all of those minor roads because I want those to be included in the screenshot. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more until they like render in. There they go. I'm gonna zoom out so that I'm literally like zoomed out as possible, um, but still have those mo like minor roads loaded in. So then I'm gonna go over to the top right where it says print and I'm gonna click the print button and then you can't really see it because of like my style and it's a super like thin line, but there's this crossbar in the middle and there's like a little bullseye. And you wanna go ahead and put that on the middle of whatever city you are doing. So I'm gonna put that there, it kind of disappears, but it's close enough. And then in the bottom left, you do your width and height. I'm doing an 11 by 17 print, but I'm gonna do this screen like static image in 20 inch by 20. That way it's a perfect square and I have some room to like crop in. And I'm also gonna set the resolution to 400 pixels per inch, because as you can see, um, the dimensions are the exact maximum. So I always try to do a 20 inch by 20 inch and then a 400 pixels per inch. So that gives me flexibility to crop into 300 pixels per inch before I print it. And it's also the maximum resolution that they let you download. So you might as well max that out. I'm gonna go ahead and click export and that's gonna go ahead and download to my computer. And then I'm gonna open it up in Illustrator in a second. 
Alrighty, so I'm in Adobe Illustrator and I'm gonna be kind of doing the final touches on this thing to get it ready to print and make it exactly how I wanna look on my poster. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a new document with an 11 by 17 size. That's just the size I'm choosing to do. So now that I've got my beautiful blank artboard here in Illustrator, I'm gonna go ahead and go up to File and down to Place. You can also do Command Shift P on your keyboard. And I'm gonna to go to my desktop where I saved my beautiful print. Alrighty, so I'm gonna go ahead and drag to place this on here. I'm just gonna make it as big as the artboard. And then I'm gonna go over to crop image up here at the top. And I'm gonna set the crop over here to 11 by 17 so that it fits my artboard perfectly. Sometimes it acts weird. It does like this 16, 9, 9, 6. I don't even know. Just go down the bottom and drag it to 17. So I'm gonna kind of center that on the map and include as much of San Antonio as I want. For some cities, you might even actually want to crop in, zoom in, so that you can see more detail in like the downtown areas, um, if that's something you like to do, or maybe you wanna like showcase an area that you've lived in, you can do, feel free to do that. It is your poster after all, so make those cropping decisions yourself. But I'm gonna try to include as much of the city as I can here. I'm gonna go up here to click apply. And so now that that's cropped, I'm gonna go ahead and just center that on my artboard, like show. So now that we've got the city, all I've got to do is put a title on there. So I just copied in a title that I've been using for the other maps that I made this week. I just have a 90% opacity box down here. Um, and then I have like the name of the city and the state. So I'm just gonna go ahead and edit this um, for San Antonio. So now that I have San Antonio, Texas typed in and all centered and scrunched into the little square that I made or rectangle, it's not a square. Um, we're pretty much ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, file and save as and save this as a Adobe PDF and just call it like San Antonio print or something. Can't spell. And then we're gonna save that into the folder. So there you have it. Hopefully you guys have a beautiful uh, city map print poster ready to go, ready to be printed, ready to be plastered all over your wall and showcased to everyone. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on new videos. Um, over the next couple weeks, I'm gonna hopefully be printing these out myself and using a DIY like um, hanger frame thingy um, to put these up in my own room. So if you guys wanna see that video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe and look out for that. Other than that, I will see you guys later. Peace out.